as much as we're getting into AI and, and generative AI and chat GPT and all these things, which are great advancements, you know, there still needs to be a lens at this point, at least, of that human filter of, you know, Hawk AI gives a recommendation. Does it make sense in the context of, you know, everything that's going on in your business? We might say, you know, if, if you trusted AI fully, it might be, you know, this product is your number one selling product, you know, advertise that more. Well, maybe you're out of stock, right? And you haven't thought about those things yet. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Today's show is sponsored by UPS Capital, the creators of the InsureShield app for Shopify. Now, like all entrepreneurs and marketers, you work hard for your company's reputation, but you know, quite often there are shipping setbacks that are really outside of your control. Like think about porch piracy or packages that are damaged in transit. And you know, shipping really has become a critical part of the customer experience, and it's essential to protect against these sorts of risks. InsureShield Shipping Insurance, which is powered by UPS Capital, is the exact solution that provides full coverage to Shopify brands, no matter the carrier. So if you ship with UPS, FedEx, or USPS, these shipments are fully covered. And the distinction here is that it's not carrier liability insurance, but it's rather shipping insurance. And InsureShield offers that sort of peace of mind that your business can recover from, I call it the inevitable shipping issues that happen on a daily basis. And you know what the great thing is that they have an easy to use portal for fast claim payments and you get the full value of the goods plus the transportation fees. So that's great, it's all bundled together. They even have a brand new feature called the consumer elected and it can even be further personalized for your exact business needs. How it works is consumers can elect to cover their purchases at checkout and the merchants can then make a custom rule to cover the cost if the consumer passes on that insurance offer. So if an issue happens, UPS Capital helps take the pain out of the claims with online submission and easy visibility. Now the InsureShield app is available now in the Shopify app store, or you can visit them at upscapital.com forward slash Shopify app for more information on all the available coverage options. As a reminder, InsureShield Shipping Insurance is offered through UPS Capital Insurance, Inc., and they are a licensed agent. Hey there, it's Steve Hutt. I'm Senior Emergency Success Manager here from Shopify, and welcome back to the sixth season of e-commerce Fastlane. Now, if this is your first time listening or your weekly subscriber, I massively appreciate the fact you're taking time today and listening to the show with so many podcast options out there covering Shopify e-commerce and kind of direct to consumer marketing. And it really means a lot to me that you've chosen to listen and learn today on the show. Now, new episodes are available twice weekly and they're available from all of your favorite podcast apps like Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. We're also streaming live on Amazon Music and on YouTube now. So if you consume your podcast that way, you might wanna go check out those platforms. I also highly recommend to get the full value of today's episode that you click through from whatever podcast app you're using. You can go over to the show notes. They'll be at ecommercefastlane.com and there you'll find links and resources that we mentioned today. Now, my guest on today's episode is Dave Bunce, who's the president of a company called Hawk AI. And there's H-A-W-K-E dot AI. Now, what Hawk AI does is they compile all of your marketing data and they transform it into an easy to read kind of comprehensive dashboard. It makes it very efficient for analysis and insights. Think paid social. But it also identifies issues and offers benchmarking statistics. So you can actually can address a lot of the problems kind of early on. So with this, you know, there's extremely high acquisition costs that are happening right now. I think this is a necessary platform really to help brands be a little more efficient with their ad spend. So let's jump in and learn more. So hi, Dave. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hey, Steve. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me today. 
My pleasure. Thank you for syncing calendars. I know we bounced around a bit. It's so interesting in this crazy work from home world, but I'm glad we synced up and get this recorded today. What I find interesting is that the feedback I'm getting from a lot of merchants right now is uh, post uh, 14.5 kind of iOS updates, this kind of like cookie apocalypse and all this craziness going third party tracking pixels, all these things going on the unfortunate blended ROAS that brands are forced to have to do a little bit because I think Facebook or Meta right now is only at like a seven day attribution window now. Um, it's really hard sometimes because we're in a multi-channel kind of world. You don't really don't know all the touch points that convert or the journey to a conversion. And so I want to talk about Hawk AI, the platform specifically, because it's very unique kind of what you guys are doing. And I want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, there's 40 some thousand people listening to the show today. I want to make sure they realize that this is a necessary piece of technology that's really not really available to the market in a mass uh, a method now, but now it is. And so I want you to share kind of what Hawk AI and the problems it's solving today. Absolutely. So primary use case for Hawk AI is providing one, easy to read dashboards, but number two is benchmarking and understanding industry trends. So we have over 6,000 brands connected onto the platform. And what that allows us to do is to anonymously aggregate that data, understand by industry vertical as well, how and where the major ad platforms and from an analytics perspective, Shopify or Google Analytics are moving and trending. And, and you bring up the iOS example, it's a fantastic uh, use case for our product where, you know, there was an sort of instantaneous drop in, you know, conversions from a tracking perspective on these platforms. But nobody really knew, you know, was their 20% drop good or bad? You know, what was happening <laughs> yeah. in the broader yeah. market? And, and everyone yeah. had to take this guess of, you know, we've lost some insights, we've lost some data here. Where do we sit? Is this, uh, is this an us problem? Is this a current performance issue? Is this an iOS issue? Is everybody having this? Uh, impact or what is the magnitude of the impact for others? Is there something we're missing? And so that was really, you know, one of the sort of light bulb moments that facilitated us moving into the direction of, of data benchmarking and, and allowing brands to see, you know, across hundreds of businesses just like theirs in terms of, you know, segmenting by industry and, and media spend and average order value, understanding what's happening in the paid media space and on the right through to the analytics side. Is really powerful. What's interesting, I know in the Shopify world too, I, I think being a success manager, I do have access to a little bit of data. And part of it is brands ask me the question about like how they fit in the similar vertical, but it, it can be challenging sometimes to kind of figure out, well, okay, fashion and apparel, okay. Or if it's footwear, you know, like what kind of footwear? And it, it, it's, it's so interesting trying to segment people off, but it's nice that you have a, a large enough pool and, and you can anonymously kind of share that kind of data. Because I think publicly, maybe it's more of a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your success manager talking about, I can't be specific about the brands that I'm kind of comparing to that are on our network, but I can give a, a kind of a general term about, you know, AOV and conversion rate and some other kind of high level kind of KPIs, just to kind of see if you're on the, the right path. Um, and it kind of gives us some ideas and stuff also. So interesting that you're, that you're doing that also. So I want to talk about the origin story because I think it's always fascinating to me why people build what they build. You have a, an interesting path from kind of what I've read from the, you know, the early days of kind of building the platform. It's, I know there's been an acquisition that's happened uh, in the recent past. And so maybe I'll give you the floor to kind of talk about the early days with Morpheo and, and kind of uh, how it's migrated over now to the Hawk organization. For sure. So I, I kind of call this, you know, 70 years and 70 seconds when somebody <laughs> asks me this question, uh, how to explain, you know, the seven wrinkles on my forehead. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The, uh, the origin story is that, like you, Steve, we're Canadian based or my team of, of Hawk AI uh, product team is, is Canadian based. So we had an agency uh, here in Canada, offices in uh, London, Ontario, where I'm based, as well as Toronto and Calgary, uh, serving, you know, clients across the country. And what we found was as we were growing, we noticed that we had to really stay on top of information more. And we were at the point where no longer could, you know, the owner of the agency or the account manager remember every KPI target for every client. And we were trying to figure out how do we stay on top of that? And so we started building this platform. We brought in uh, a PhD in machine learning from the university here in town. Uh, and started and founded what was known as Morpheo at the time. And the idea was, how do we identify 
you know, changes so that A, we're ahead of it before we get the angry emails from clients and B, how do we, you know, use that information to get better results for our clients? And that was sort of the impetus of, of the platform. So Morpheo sat within our agency until we sold the agency uh, at the end of 2019. We spun out the IP uh, into its own business called Morpheo. Uh, we were in commercialization for about two years, uh, brought in some funding. And then spring of last year, Hawk Media approached us, who's a full service agency based out of the US. Uh, we'd been friends with them for, for years uh, through the agency space. Uh, and uh, they came to us with an offer uh, to bring, you know, the amount of data that they have and the amount of uh, clients they have and network that they have in the agency world, particularly in the U.S., uh, combine that with our technology as the underpinning uh, was a sort of perfect match. So we spent last year bringing it uh, to fruition and then launching Hawk AI in the fall. Oh, that's lovely. I know Eric uh, quite well. He's been on the show a few times and, uh, you know, just talking about the kind of the outsource, I think their big tagline, if I remember correctly, is kind of the outsource CMO kind of thing. And they do a lot of great work. And, you know, that's nice thing about their agency. I mean, maybe it's another podcast, hi Eric on again, but what's interesting is that, you know, you can slice off very unique pieces of whatever uh, is lacking in your business, whatever that piece is. It's not like, you know, fully taking over everything from email to retention marketing. And like, it's just, they don't need to do all of it. They can, but also a lot of times I find with some brands, they're just lacking maybe the skill set or the bandwidth of a certain type of marketing tactic that needs to be executed on. And then Hawk fills that gap perfectly. So what I find interesting though, maybe let, let's talk about like maybe the why behind, you know, Eric and that leadership team seeing value in the Morpheo product and now, you know, rebranded now Hawk AI. But let's talk about the synergies now between the done for you services that Hawk has and then the Morpheo product. And let's talk about just that overall technology fit. Yeah, it's perfect in two ways. One, there's, you know, the internal use case that Hawk Media Services team uses Hawk AI and having at their disposal the anonymized data to inform performance and client expectations and, and performance uh, reporting has been huge. But then, you know, external to that, the, the synergy is great in, in a couple of ways. One is Hawk AI is a very affordable, low barrier to entry in terms of pricing. And so we are able to span you know, between Hawk AI and the services side, we've now opened up uh, potential, you know, opportunities to work with brands that are smaller through sort of our lower price point and lower package within Hawk AI uh, to really get their foot in the door, have, uh, you know, access to valuable information, insights, a second set of eyes on the account and performance, if you will, without paying, you know, the services uh, retainer uh, contract. So that A was a, a great synergy there. And then B, you know, there is a, a great opportunity for in-house teams and brands to use Hawk AI. Uh, we're sitting, you know, about two thirds of our revenue come from agencies and one third brand. So we are able to serve both of those markets uh, well. And, and that meant that from a synergy standpoint, those brands that do have in-house teams can still benefit from our data and our technology uh, rather than, you know, being shut out from the service side of things. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's talk about the product itself physically, because people are probably wondering, okay, like, what does it actually do? Great. Okay. So we have this reporting, we have these KPI dashboards, and we have some benchmarking, we have all that stuff seems interesting and useful. Let's talk about some of the use cases that you've seen people having their aha moment about, oh, wow, thank God <laughs> we had Hawk AI running. So I want to hear these stories. For sure. So one of them is the monitoring side of, of the platform and our alerts. And the idea here is we detect for you when there are changes in your results outside of the targets that the business wants to achieve or outside of historical ranges, while also factoring into those expectations, you know, the industry data and seasonality and all of those things. But what we're looking at, for example, one use case was somebody had set uh, their budget uh, with an extra zero on the end for a campaign. Uh, and <laughs> nice. it's as simple as that, right? So yeah. we had a, we had a brand that was making changes to their campaign budgets. And, you know, instead of 3,000 put in 30,000 uh, as a budget, 
And sure enough, you know, the next day, they kind of said and forget it. And then the next morning, 5 a.m., they had an alert from us in their inbox saying, you've overspent and, or you're on pace to overspend. And we've, you know, identified this issue and there's a problem here. And this is suddenly, we've seen this spike in media spend, you know, and that saved the brand, you know, thousands of dollars right there, getting that sort of early warning detection as opposed to, you know, when it was too late and after that 30,000 was spent. Uh, so that, you know, that's a simple, easy use case to understand of just kind of that block and tackle monitoring side of it. From the performance benchmark side, what we actually saw there, the use case that's interesting is we had a, a brand that is well-known uh, female apparel company that, that Hawk Media works with. And what they were looking to do was to understand the efficacy of diversifying their paid uh, social tactics. So understandably, you know, no surprise, there's been a lot of shifting in ad spend between the social platforms and social networks lately, uh, between Facebook or Meta and, and TikTok, Pinterest, etc. So what we were able to do through our platform was able to identify the benchmarks of cost for those platforms within that that women's apparel category and understanding you know what the average order value of those uh, products and, and businesses were that they were being compared to and saw where the opportunity was to diversify they knew that they needed to increase their spread or allocation to different platforms and knew that they wanted to ramp up uh, but how much and, and what could they expect are kind of typical questions marketers ask right if I have another, 5,000 or if I have to cut 5,000, where do I make those changes? What platforms and what can I expect? How is that going to impact me? And so between our budget recommendations of on reallocating spending and, and our benchmarking data, we were able to come up with a, a media plan that, that made sense. Uh, and, and the results have been fantastic uh, for that brand in terms of seeing uh, an uplift in overall revenue as reported by Shopify when we soon after made that diversification of, of the media spend. So that's the nice part about our platform as well. You know, you talk about use cases is we're not replacing by any means the Google Analytics. We're not an attribution platform or anything like that. But by being able to marry up the data from your Shopify account or from your Google Analytics uh, to your paid media spending, you get that holistic view uh, that really lets you be able to see the impact of one to the other. I'll give you another use case was uh, we had, uh, we gave an, a notification that the conversion rate was trending down for a site, uh, for a client. They were spending more on paid media. So we had, saw this sort of dichotomy of your paid media spend is up, uh, your clicks are up and your website isn't uh, performing as well. Well, we have uh page speed built in and we pull some of those performance metrics for page speed. So we were able to identify that their number one landing page in terms of paid ad traffic had recently had a, a code change done on it. And we said this, this speed on this page is suddenly decreased. And so there was a conversion rate issue because the site speed was down. Uh, so just those types of use cases of, of seeing holistically what's happening kind of to give you a picture of, of what the use cases are. That's cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's really neat that uh, you're digging into uh, PageSpeed insights like through Google, because it's like, you know, these third party dependencies, a lot of times, yeah, it could be like on page code. It also could be third parties having some challenges with their networks, JavaScript firing and pixels are waiting, waiting, waiting. It's just, and you wonder why the customer experience just goes down the toilet and you're spending money on these, you know, on these ads and people to come that are now bouncing. Trust me, Meta's getting their dollars, <laughs> even though people are bouncing, right? And it's good that you're not an attribution platform because I think, well, you know, when I learn more about kind of what Hawk AI does, I, I also think about there can be some odd things. I think, I think you use the word anomalies, but like the whole anomaly detection, can you share kind of what that is and then how you're able to learn from that? I think it's similar to your alert system, but anomalies are maybe not human errors or just misallocated spending to other things based on KPIs that you're tracking and the targets that you've set. These are other kind of really strange things going on with, you know, Meta and Google and, and TikTok. So maybe can you talk a bit about that? 
Yeah, for sure. So at a campaign level, we're analyzing the results of your campaigns on across all of the connected ad platforms. And we're establishing what we're calling an expected range of performance. And included in that, again, there's historical, there's seasonality, there's also the industry benchmarks. There's also the correlation between other metrics. So understanding you know, if, if your media spend goes up 20%, well, we should see or would expect to see a 20% <laughs> yeah. increase in clicks, hopefully, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least that's the correlation between the two. And so the anomaly feature would, for example, in that case, if you spent 20% higher on a campaign in a given week and your clicks only went up 10%, we would highlight a negative anomaly on the clicks to say that we would have expected this correlation uh, that didn't come to fruition. And based on the variance from that expected range, we produce sort of tiered, very easy to see color coded error reports, basically of, you know, where to prioritize or a heat map, if you will, of, you know, you're logging in Monday, figuring out what is our plan of attack to improve our results this week? Where do we need to optimize? Rather than guessing, you can go onto our anomalies page and really identify the key metrics that are causing a change in performance or could have the best opportunity to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is amazing. I just think it's it's kind of a, this big one two punch then, you know, because you are getting like the alerts based on campaign level and kind of targets and things that you've set, but then and how to reallocate budgets. But I just love the fact that there's some other it almost seems like it's not operational efficiency that's kind of going along with it, saying, hey, every morning it sounds like, you know, someone comes into work and they kind of log into the platform or there's a notification sent to them saying, hey, something is odd here that needs your attention. Like for an in-house team, it sounds like it's so interesting why you're, you know, really having, instead of logging into the ad platforms directly, you know, that in itself, they're not really going to talk about the anomalies <laughs> that are happening. It's just the performance is what it is. They're going to try their best machine learning and kind of AI to kind of spend your money as efficiently as possible. But on the flip side, you wonder why there's this disparity where you're seeing that and you're alerting people to saying, hey, we need some humans to have a look here because something's not right. Meta and Google and TikTok are going to continue spending your money based on your budget. <laughs> They're a business too. They're not going to alert you about the anomalies that they may or may not be seeing. So that's very interesting. That's right. And through our, our own work in our uh, original agency, that's where we learned, you know, marketers spend the most amount of time and enjoy the least is the sort of initial investigation, right? Every marketer wants to be, you know, creative and problem solving and actioning. Uh, and, and frankly, as much as we're getting into AI and, and generative AI and chat GPT and all these things, which are great advancements, you know, there still needs to be a lens at this point, at least of that human filter of, you know, Hawk AI gives a recommendation. <laughs> Does it make sense in the context yeah. of, you know, everything that's going on in your business? We might say, you know, if, if you trusted AI fully, it might be, you know, this product is your number one selling product, you know, advertise that more. Well, maybe you're out of stock, right? And you haven't thought about those things yet. So building, there's so many variables in there. Uh, it's tough to necessarily know. So that's what we're, we're really hanging our hat on right now is cutting down investigation time, you know, processing a large volume of data to give you insights faster and frankly, insights that a human couldn't find. And then letting the, the marketer do the, the fun work of, you know, actually thinking about you know, how does this apply to our strategy and, and what's the right decision for our business. Today's supply chain is somewhat unreliable and shoppers are actively seeking for options to better protect the items that they buy online. Now, our show sponsor, UPS Capital, recently commissioned research which shows that 65% of consumers would be interested in the option to request coverage for specific online orders. Now, with UPS Capital's InsureShield app for Shopify, it's a new consumer elected feature that can do exactly that. Consumers can elect to cover their purchases at checkout and merchants can then make a custom rule to add the insurance in a rare case that the consumer passes on that insurance. This added protection will enhance the customer's trust and confidence in your business. It will improve your conversion rate and your customer experience. 
And you can now manage your shipping insurance preferences with the ultimate in flexibility. You can change the rules whenever you need to. You can file claims at any time. Now, the InsureShield app is available now in the Shopify app store, or you can visit upscapital.com forward slash Shopify app for more information. As a reminder, InsureShield shipping insurance is offered through UPS Capital Insurance, Inc., and they are a licensed agent. And now back to our episode. Let's chat about the onboarding process. So Shopify brand decides, yeah, I want to give this a whirl. You're right. I'm not getting the appropriate alerts. I want to improve my my allocation of my budget. I'm curious about these anomalies that could potentially happen. At the end of the day, I just want to improve my CAC. My acquisition costs continue to rise. This obviously is a tool used by Hawk the agency. Like this is this is the secret sauce that's going on in the background if you're on retainer with Hawk right now. One of many probably tools that are available. And so let's say a brand says, yes, I want to try uh, Hawk AI. Walk us through what the next steps are from the onboarding and connecting platforms and kind of getting going. Yeah, pretty straightforward. We always recommend having a, a demo meeting with us, which you can book on our site, uh, just to go over navigation and different use cases and what features are, are really important to, to that user so they know uh, how to get set up. But otherwise, you know, we always recommend that. But there is also a free trial directly from our site that's open to anybody for a couple of week trial. Integration is fairly straightforward. Uh, you just need to have access to the ad accounts. Installing on Shopify is is just like installing a, an app. So we have the instructions there. So it's just an app install. So you get your app install on Shopify. You get your paid platforms connected. That takes, you know, five minutes. And then onboarding from there, if you want to, if you're a self-guided individual, you know, a ton of tutorial videos and that sort of stuff, Getting set up takes probably 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on how robust you want to get your setup. And we do have a guided onboarding complimentary as well to make sure everybody feels comfortable in the platform. And that takes place partway through your trial. And then uh, then we go from there. Okay, perfect. Sounds pretty straightforward. And then how about pricing? So, you know, obviously people listening today, I mean, there's gosh, probably close to 3 million kind of Shopify core merchants and I don't know, 12, 15,000 plus brands, lots of people listening today, different complexities, maturities. So let's talk about kind of the starting points of kind of pricing and kind of how it scales up based on the size or complexity of the business. For sure. So our pricing is based on tiers of media spend. Uh, drivers for that is predominantly you know, it's, it's the same feature set in terms of the amount of data being pulled, being analyzed, and the value of, of the insights are obviously very different for somebody spending $5,000 versus $500,000 a month. And we have both of those ranges on our platform. So, you know, there is uh, different use cases for those. But we base those on media tiers. Pricing starts pretty reasonably for that sort of introductory tier where you start at $99 a month uh, and then ramps up from there. I see. Okay, cool. So let's talk a bit about the kind of competition. I'm always open to this because I, you know, I probably record maybe 115 episodes a year, lots of partners. There's lots of kind of reporting solutions. There's just kind of enhancing what Shopify kind of already has. And so you're notably different. So I'd, li I'd like to talk a little bit about that, about, you know, why you're notable in the space compared to others that are maybe just doing reporting or just doing attribution in some form. We kind of have some idea, but I'd just like to hear it from you about specifically how you kind of are uniquely positioned differently than others in the space. For sure. I divide our industry up into, as you mentioned, reporting. Uh, on one end of the spectrum and then sort of automation on the other. And the automation is, is typically single platform or, you know, single channel focused. So you think of, uh, you know, an Optio or a Magix for, for Meta, Optio for, for Google Ads. But these tools that are, you know, perfectly acceptable, good at what they do, where you plug them into that one paid tactic, they find micro optimizations at the keyword level or something like that and makes those updates. That's, that's good. That's great. That's that automation side, but it is very much, you know, plug in, make some micro adjustments and, and go from there. And I think overall, our sort of stance on that side of the market is 
the controls and the levers that the ad platforms themselves are giving users are being decreased, right? You've seen Google move towards performance max campaigns heavily, heavily. Uh, and you see, you know, some of the obfuscation, if you will, of data and placements and, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, performance max, it's cross network. Well, okay, what does that mean? Where's this ad showing up? It's showing up everywhere in the network. Yeah. <laughs> we won't tell you, but yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> we put it everywhere for you. So, you know, you see those challenges and it's hard not to see that automation from a platform basis is kind of overtaking or taking away some of those controls that the third party automation tools typically would look at as well, right? So that's the one side of, of the market. And, and we've kind of steered away from that again, because the research and sort of our understanding from our own experience as well is the time and effort in, in finding the problems or identifying and investigating results was actually the part that people liked the least and it took the most amount of time. So then you go to the reporting and say, okay, well, the time saver then is having all the data in one place and, and that. So on that far end of the spectrum on reporting, you know, you think of something as simple as Supermetrics data pipeline, you know, you plug in your ad accounts and Supermetrics spits it into a, a Google sheet or into a Looker Studio, Data Studio formerly. And that's sort of that side. The issue we have with that, and we used those tools at our agency as well. And, and the challenge was, Someone still had to go and look. Someone still had to understand whether or not there was an issue. Somebody still opened the dashboard every day. And, you know, the platform wasn't or the, the report wasn't telling you anything other than the data. And so we want to live in this middle of we are a data insights tool. So we pull in the data, we report on it, we provide what those reporting tools do, but then we overlay the analysis and then we overlay the insights from those 6,000 businesses and from your historical results. And we apply machine learning to understand what expected ranges look like and what your optimization of budget uh, reallocation could give you. And so we have that analysis and that sort of smart data, I call it, where we've actually, it's not flat. We've done something with it. We've analyzed it. We're giving you context and that's really where we live. So I, I don't put us in the automation camp. I put us more towards reporting, but with insights and analysis being done on the data. Yeah, thank you for that. I would also add one more thing that I think is interesting too. I mean, we can go down another rabbit hole of kind of incrementality testing, which is a whole separate kind of conversation. One other one that's on my mind a lot is this kind of conversion modeling. And conversion modeling is very interesting. I think I recently interviewed uh, Segment Stream. They're non-competitive to you. They're in a whole different kind of world where the challenge in the market, just more in education for those that haven't listened to that recording, was that most uh, platforms like Shopify, for example, when you're connected these ad platforms, they're only sending conversion data back to Meta and Google and TikTok. That's the only data that's going back to them. That's the pipe. And then that's what they're using for lookalikes and trying to find kind of net new customers based on these conversion metrics. But the reality is like, I mean, you think of like 98% of people or 97% of the traffic is unknown, non-converted. And that's one advantage of you really want to fix your, or this thing called conversion modeling is to actually have all of the data piped back to, and then you're teaching Meta and you're teaching Google about the fact that, yes, I had these conversions, but I also had these people touch point, touch point, touch point. They know who they are and have that pipe go back. So it's interesting. It couldn't be a really interesting one-two punch with segment stream as the solution and then using Hawk AI as the, as the other part of the solutions. You're getting a full pipe open to these ad platforms, but then you're actually monitoring and tracking all of it. So it's very interesting. Yeah, that's a, a great example. And I am familiar with segment stream and, and I would agree that's a, a good pairing. Perfect. So let's talk about the future for the product. I mean, you very clearly are positioned what I think very uniquely in the market. I think uh, the whole idea of getting you on today's recording is I, th you know, I think you're offering a lot of value to different types of teams, either the in-house teams or as another small tool just on the side, just to make sure that your ad spend is being done correctly with your agency. And so, and it's quite affordable, uh, you know, when I say hundred dollars a month, it's a really good starting point and just scales up from there. But let's talk about the future of the product. I don't know if you have a public roadmap or anything you can talk about, about, you know, for the rest of this year or into next year. For sure. We go quarter at a time. Uh, and then I, so I can speak to some of the specifics <laughs> rolling out in the next few months. And, and that is part of the fun of being in, 
you know, a, a large company like Hawk, but being in a small product team still where we can be pretty nimble and agile based on needs and requests and that, and, you know, everything changes pretty quickly in our industry. So being responsive is important. The roadmap for us in the next quarter, and then I'll talk about vision of, of the next 12 months and things we're going to be looking at. But for the next three months, we've got a couple of uh, key updates lined up. One of them is email integration as well. Hawk Media is a, a well-known partner with Clavio. Uh, and I know, obviously, Shopify has a, has a great relationship with them. And that sort of rounding out of the data set that can be put into that one place, as you said, is, is valuable. So we're bringing in Clavio as well as a few other email service providers that will round out sort of email marketing as well. So now you'll have uh, paid media as well as that life cycle email side of things. Lovely. Yeah. And then Hawk Media is also a, a partner with PostScript from the SMS side of things, et cetera. So we'll probably pull in some of that data as well. So there, there's the adding of, of integrations, rounding that out. And then from a functionality perspective, there's a couple of things. One, refining our data benchmarking to give you even more granularity, being able to apply multiple filters to your analysis so you can say, you know, not just I'm an apparel company or not just I'm advertising on these platforms or I'm spending this much, but layering those in together. And we're now at the size where we're able to layer on some of that filtering to say, okay, I'm, a, uh, I'm an e-commerce brand that is selling home and garden or home products. I'm spending between, you know, 50000 to 100000 a month. My average order value is 200 bucks. And then us being able to give you a profile of, of businesses that we have that fit that sort of Venn diagram so you can get even more granularity. And then after that, what we've got is we've got the larger vision of bringing more sort of campaign management and, uh, and insights into the platform. So for example, putting some of the intelligent rules in place, and I'm careful because I know I kind of talked about automation there. But what we would be looking at is bringing in more of a rules-based approach to that automation to say, if a budget exceeds 100% or 90% or 80%, do you want us to turn it off? Do you want us to push the changes? Right now, users can log into Hawk AI and make changes to budgets and campaign status and all of that. But we're going to set up these rules that allow us to take care of those things. Because again, part of monitoring and protection is making sure if you're sending paid traffic to a landing page, for example, that's down and 404-ing, we right now give you that notification, but let's go one step further to just shut that campaign down for you if the user <laughs> chooses, right? Rather than just telling you your house is on fire, right? Uh, we'll call the fire department. And so the, uh, or we'll be the fire department for yeah. you really. And then uh, beyond that, the other one that's on our radar that I think is really important, particularly for brands, is the creative uh, and copy analysis. So understanding there, and we are, you know, I won't go into too much, but we are underway in experimentation in using the ChatGPT uh, API to understand, you know, what inputs can we feed it and how confident can we get in what the return is there in terms of analyzing the copy and the ads and finding commonalities between top performing ads as well as creative. And obviously that doesn't fit into the, the generative AI side of things just yet, but bringing in the creative, bringing in the copy, giving brands particularly that insight of, here's what ads are really performing. Here's what copy is really performing. A, because it's helpful to know from an optimization perspective and B, you know, that kind of market research and intelligence can really inform broader business strategy and marketing strategy. We think that that's valuable. Uh, so that's on the radar and, and we are looking to implement that in uh, about three to four months. Oh, perfect. Wow. Okay. It's awesome. We are kind of nearing the end of the show for today, but um, one thing that I wanted to uh, you know, tell my listeners that we kind of chit chatted a little bit before recording. And I understand that uh, you would like to, I guess, offer a little incentive for those listening today that, you know, if they agree that, Hey, you know what, this anomaly detection, my reporting, just all the parts of the Hawk 
AI platform. If you're seeing value in that, it's quite affordable and you really want to kind of kick the tires a bit and actually run it with your campaigns. Let's talk about an offer that you're, that I think everybody should try. Yeah. Uh, and you know, so I'll let you have the floor. For sure. So we'd be excited to, to share out a promotion of three months uh, of free Hawk AI use. As I said, our standard is, is two week trial, but we know that uh, listeners of this show are sophisticated and growing brands uh, that definitely fit our ideal customer profile. And once you get in there and see the data and see sort of our user interface and such, we're always confident in, in what we can provide. So. Happy to give away here three months free. Uh, you can just go to uh, hawk.ai slash activate, create an account there, or just go to hawk.ai and, and follow the path there. And the promo code is uh, three for free. And uh, when I say four, it's F-O-R. So three, F-O-R, three, uh, F-R-E-E. -E. Love it. I'll have all this in the show notes. So 100%, I highly recommend. I mean, three months is like, is ridiculous amount of time. Thank you for being so kind to offer that. But I think it really shows proof of concept when you actually get to use it. You see the day to day, what it actually looks like and like, okay, am I getting value out of what this tool is actually presenting to me? Um, do I have the alerts that I need? Am I being more efficient with my ad spend? The anomaly detection, I think just overall, I think just being a part of that community. And then it opens up some dialogue too, I bet that, you know, once you're kind of a Hawk AI customer, what does that mean maybe for the Hawk media group? And is there potentially an opportunity of, like I said, at the top of the show, is there a small slice of marketing strategy or performance uh, part that you're not doing well in or you want to be improved, this could be another opportunity. It could open up some doors of saying, hey, you know, when you're part of this community, then all of a sudden, yes, you're right. I'm missing kind of this or, you know, and I'm sure there can be conversations with like success managers down the road of saying, hey, you know what, like, how's your retention marketing going? Just so you know, we have kind of a done for you service that we'll actually do it for you or a creative service or whatever. And I think that opens up those sort of dialogue too. So pretty exciting, pretty exciting. So, you know, thanks Dave for coming on the show today. I, I uh, always wanted to record this. I, when I heard about this solution, I'm just like, oh man, I gotta, this is something that I think people need. I just, nothing worse as you said, like finding out later that you burn through all your money. And it's just like, it's, it's a horrible feeling, right? And these anomalies and different things. So I think it's, it's great that there's, you know, there's some technology running like 24 hours a day uh, to help. And because every dollar counts right now, everyone's trying to reduce their CAC and, um, and trying to improve their LTV. And they just, they want to find the right most efficient channels it sounds like when you connect everything in there you have a full view and you can actually make the right decisions so i appreciate that yeah thanks for having me steve and great chat absolutely have yourself a great day you too Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify. Shopify.